Hi, this is the first of two videos which are going to look at iteration in Python. In this video we're looking at for loops and in the next one we'll look at while loops. Okay, so iteration is I suppose the most formal way of talking about it, but we can also call it, so we've got iteration, right, which is the sort of most formal way of referring to what is just repetition. And equally we can call this looping. So looping is where we are repeating something in code and that means we are iterating. And so I've mentioned before we have these um, three main programming constructs. We have sequence, selection, and iteration. So far we've looked at just sequence and selection. We're now doing iteration, of course. Oftentimes, programs, and I suppose life more generally, is very repetitive. We're doing the same sort of stuff over and over again, maybe with slight differences. So maybe we've got a, a list with some names in it, and we're trying to print out each of the names. Well, we can do what we did previously in the last video and just use the index number. So I can do print names and then index of zero. That's our first one. And then I can repeat this two more times for Bob and for Charlie. Like this. And print it out this way. But imagine if this is like a, a list with hundreds of items in. Having hundreds of lines of code doing the exact same thing is really not very efficient. Each of these lines of code needs to be translated by the computer. Each of these needs to be saved in our Python file. We need to either write or copy each of these lines. It's not very efficient for any of us. Well, it's either us or the computer. It's not very efficient for either of those two. It would also make your code horrible to look at because you just have loads and loads of pointless lines which are doing very, very similar things. And anyway, sometimes we don't even know how many times we need to do this repeat. Maybe we are having the user add items to our list. We don't know how long the list is going to be when we are writing our program. And so doing something like this isn't going to work unless we have, you know, an if statement with every single possibility, which by definition we can't do. So loops are how we can do this in a much more sensible manner. In Python, we have two iterative structures. You know, for selection, we only had the if statement, albeit with two other clauses, else if and else. But um, with iteration, we have two. So we have for loops, for loops, and we have while loops. So let's start by looking at for loops, first of all. So if I want to convert what I just did before into a for loop, I can do for name in names and then do a colon. This is a for statement. We're beginning with the for keyword, which is in lowercase. We also have an in keyword, which we've used before to check whether something belongs into something else. It's quite versatile. It's being used in a little bit of a different case here. We're seeing, we're basically looking throughout this list called names, and each item is going to be called name, and this is a variable we are setting up just for this loop, and each, each loop is going to assign a new item to this, starting at the beginning and ending up with Charlie. So if I present it after my colon, exactly the same as with if statements, we get a little bit of indentation, we get a gap at the start of our line. This was put in for me by Replit. If it's not doing it for you, you can just add a tab and backspace to get rid of it, add a tab to get back. And this indentation is really important because it's, it's what's telling Python what should go inside the loop, what should be repeated in other words. If we don't have it, Python has got no way of knowing where the loop ends and where it uh, begins. So um, if I now just do print name, I'm using this variable. We don't assign it like a normal way. It's being assigned for us as it goes through the list. And we'll get the same output as we did. So that is Bob Charlie. Each time it's repeating, it's repeating three times in this case, because that's how many items we've got on the list. It is just printing out the name and the name gets updated each iteration. Generally speaking, we use for loops when we know in our mind how many times we want to repeat. In this case, we just want to repeat as many times as there are items in our list so we can print each one individually. You know, if I added a fifth uh, item to this, uh, fourth item I should say, can't count, uh, it's just gonna update the number, but I'm still repeating the same, I still know it's gonna be the same number of times as the items in the list. And so because of this, for loops are also referred to as count controlled loops and more generally speaking also called definite iteration. Both mean the same thing really that we are um, we are looping based on a counter really and we are defining that counter ourselves. We can look at our loop and know how many times it's going to iterate even if maybe it's that exact number is going to be determined at runtime. Maybe the user is in inputting how many times um, but we can still look at it and know when it's going to end and this is different to a while loop as we'll see. 
Okay, what I've just done is change my names list from a one dimensional list into a two dimensional list. We can see we now have lists within the wider list. And so if I run my code again, let's see what happens. Maybe let's just collapse this a bit more um, and run this. So instead, because we're still iterating through the items, we are just getting the lists, which are items, but we're not getting the exact item within that item. So if we want to get maybe Alice and her age and print those out, I need to do a nested loop within this loop. So if I just get rid of this print statement and do another for loop. So when we are nesting a construct, we are putting it in another construct. So if I now do for um, item, for item in name, so we're using, in this case, this name is now a list because in each iteration we are assigning a new list to the name variable, or it's a list in this case, of a name object. And now we can look within that list and assign a new variable called item for the individual item in that sublist. So now I can do print and we could do print item. So let's see what this does if I just get rid of that white space. So we should get each of the items sort of printed individually like that. So that's okay, but it's not the greatest formatting. What I could do is change the end parameter to be uh, an empty string or mm, just a space actually. So it isn't going all onto different lines. So let's have a look at this. The issue is it's gonna put them all onto one line, which is not maybe what I want. I maybe want Alice 30, then Bob 5, then Charlie 77 on different lines. So what I can do is if I make sure I'm out of this nested loop. I want to be out of that iterative structure because I want to, well I'll show this in a sec, if I do print and this time I'm going to do a string but I'm going to do a backslash and an n. This is an escape character. When I do a backslash it, I am escaping the next character so it doesn't believe this n is an actual n like a character n. It's a command to the uh, interpreter. So what this does is it goes onto a new line. So this is a new line character. So if I run this now we're going to get Alice 30, Bob 5, Charlie 77, Day 41 on different lines because I've added this new line character. Now the question is how could we write code so that it says something like Alice is 30, Bob is 5, Charlie is 77? Because what you could do, you could do item and then so you, the first item is going to be Alice. I could do item comma and then is and then another comma to make sure I'm separating this. Run this again. It's going to look funny. It's going to be Alex is 30 is. Bob is five is, it looks stupid, because we're just repeating it and it doesn't know which item is the first one and which is the second one, it doesn't care. And that's one of the issues with using a for loop like this. The syntax is really, really simple, but it, it's just giving us the item without anything else. If I just switch to the shell just to show you another way of writing for loops which can help us with this issue. If I do something like four i in range five and a colon, Let's just break this apart quickly. Again, we've got a variable we are setting. And range is a built-in function to Python and it can take at least one argument. So if I press enter now, and if I do a tab, because this doesn't know that it's a tab, it doesn't know that it's an indent yet, uh, and type print i and press enter, nothing will happen because it's given me a chance to add something else. But if I press enter again, uh, two more times, I get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 printed out to me. So what we have going on here, we have i being assigned and in each loop it's being assigned a new value from range. So range when it's got one argument starts off counting at zero and goes up and two but not including the number you put inside. So it's counting at zero, one, two, three, four but not five because that's what we've put into the argument. Then with each loop we are using that variable and just printing it out to the user. And we can call that variable anything we want to as long as it's not a reserved uh, name. So you can call it count. It's generally convention to call it i. Also j is used a lot, doesn't really matter. Generally speaking, we want to have variables which are meaningful, but in a loop it doesn't matter so much, especially if it's being used as just a counter. So range can take multiple arguments. If I do, first of all, if I want to start counting at two, I put in two as my first argument, then a comma, and the second argument is going to be, again, the upper range, but not including that number. So if I want to go up to five this time, I'm going to put six, Press enter, and again, I have to make sure I do my tab, which I forgot. Print count, and press enter, press enter again, and this time we get two, three, four, five. 
Now, range can also take a third argument. If I do something like four, let's do j in this case, four j in range. And if I do, so say I want to count backwards from 10 to one. The third argument is there to be the step size. So how big of a gap should be between the numbers by default is going to be one. So if I now do as my first, if my starting point, I want that to be 10. My end point, I want to be one, but like with before, it's not including that number. So I'm going to put zero. Then in my third argument, I'm going to put minus one, which makes it go backwards a bit like how we did that reverse indexing. And I do a colon, do a tab and print J and I should get uh, 10 going down to one. I think more so than with how I showed the for loop before where we're iterating across a list. When we're doing range, it becomes more obvious why it's called a count controlled loop. We are counting up and that's what we were doing really with the list as well. We're counting up or down in this case. Uh, but we know how many times it's going to count if we have a look at the loop. This will be different to a while loop. So let's try and use this in adapting our program here. Because really what I want is, if I just remind myself what this did. So we have Alice's 30 is, not ideal. We want it to be Alice's 30 and not have this is afterwards. And what we could do, which as I said, is not the only way of doing this. We could do alter this in a loop. We're happy with the outer loop because we're getting the sub list. If I alter this and go instead for, let's say, uh, let's do index in range, and we want to start at zero because we know there's something in that list. And I can then do as my second, my endpoint, if I do the length of that name, which is that list we are getting in each iteration, I know that, as we looked at before, the, the endpoint is one greater than the number you're actually going to go up to. And so if we're trying to index this, we know that because we start counting at zero, the length is always one more than the highest index. And so this will work okay. If I now, we can now use the index, which is now a number as opposed to an item to actually index uh, the item ourselves. So if I now go something like this, um, well, let's just alter this so that it works as it was before. So if I add in now, if I'm now going to use this iterated index, to actually index the item in the name array or name list. I can run this, it should be exactly the same, which it is. Um, but now if I want to maybe only add in is if it's following the first item in the name list. Well, I can do an if statement here to do this. If I do, um, I could do if, if index equals equals zero, we're going to print the name plus is like that make sure we have an indentation. So we've got a few levels now, a few levels of indentation you can see up here. Uh, and now, uh, if that's fine, if it's not index of zero, if it's index of one, uh, I'm going to just print out the item like so. And now if I run this, it should work how we wanted it to. So Alice is 30, Bob is five, and so on. So we're just altering what we're doing based on the index number here, but we needed to change this to a different kind of for loop. So just to summarize what this is doing, we have this two dimensional list up here and our outer loop here is basically just checking through each item. So it's assigning in this case in the, in the first iteration, Alice and 30 under the list name and name. It's then going to start counting from zero up until one because the length of name in this case is two. We've got two items in that sub list, but we're not going to go up until two. We're, we're leaving two. So we just have zero and one and this will change if I added a third if I added a third item here it might look a bit silly but it would work the same it's not going to suddenly break um, because we are we haven't hard coded this we're using the length to work it out and the first time this nested loop loops index is going to be zero and so we're going to use that index number to index uh, name to get the first item which is Alice in this case we're then going to add is to it and then if it's not the first item, we don't want to add is. So we have an else statement and we again just index it, but without the is added on. And this backslash n is an escape character, which tells Python to go on to a new line. So in total, this outer loop for name and names is just looping four times because we have four items at the first dimension in this one in this 2D list. But for each of those four iterations, this inner list is going to iterate, if we get rid of this third item, is going to iterate twice because it's going through each sub list. And so in total, we've got four times two iterations. We have eight iterations in total. Now I would recommend you pause and have a look at these two questions. The first one is trying to replicate the following sequences I have specified. So have a little play around with for loops. 
And question two is practicing with our double loops, so having one nested in another, which are particularly useful for 2D arrays. So first of all, try and populate an array by counting up from one to 25, but making sure each sublist in the second dimension is a group of five. So one, two, three, four, five will be in one, it will be an index zero of your list, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten will be an index one, and so on up until 25. And then to show that to the user, like I have down here, have a separate structure, and then print out each individual group on their own line. And as always, there'll be a solution in the description.